Today let us learn about computer memory. In our daily lives, we learn so many new things. We also remember most of those things. When you prepare for your exams, you learn all the information and store it in your brain that is your memory. Similarly, the computer also stores all its information in its memory. Now, the memory of a computer is called the storage space. Data in computer is stored in the form of bits and bytes. Well, so what are bits and bytes? Bits and bytes are basically the units of memory. Let us understand this with an example. In order to measure the weight of vegetables, we use units like kg, grams, etc. We already know that kilograms, grams are the units of mass. Similarly, in case of computer, the smallest unit of data is a bit. Data in computer is measured in the form of bits and bytes. Let us understand what a bit means. A bit either means 0 or 1. So, in case of computer, information is stored only in the form of 0 or 1. Why? Why does it happen? Well, because the computer does not understand our language like English or Hindi. Rather, it understands only binary. Binary means language involving 0 and 1. Now, so what is a byte? Well, when we collect 8 bits together, it forms a byte. So, a group of 8 bits is called equal to 1 byte. Now, here is a table showing the different memory sizes. As we already know that 1 byte is equal to 8 bits. Similarly, 1 kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes. 1 megabyte is equal to 1024 kilobytes. 1 gigabyte is equal to 1024 megabytes. 1 terabyte is equal to 1024 gigabytes. 1 petabyte is equal to 1024 terabytes. So, in order to store larger data, we have bigger units like kilobyte, gigabyte, etc. Let's take one everyday example that we use in our daily lives. In your phone too, when you use your data, that is internet, it tells you how much data you have consumed. Like some may use 1.5 GB data or even 2 GB data. So basically, all the data is measured in the terms of bytes. Now computer memory can be of two types, primary memory and secondary memory. So as I've said, memory is of two types, primary memory and secondary memory. Let us start with primary memory. So primary memory is also known as the main memory of the computer. Primary memory is called the internal memory of computer. Now primary memory can be simply divided further into RAM and ROM. Now RAM stands for random access memory. Now RAM is a volatile memory. What does this mean? Let us see, what is the meaning of volatile? So in case of volatile memory, the data is lost when the computer is turned off. Suppose you are drawing something on MS Paint and suddenly due to power cut, your computer got switched off. When you again switch on your computer, will you be able to find that drawing? The answer is no. Why? Because the data in RAM is stored temporarily. That means when the data is lost, when your computer is turned off. Now, let us learn about ROM. 
So ROM stands for Read Only Memory. Now in ROM the data is non-volatile and the data is stored permanently. ROM is non-volatile. That means this time all the data is going to be stored permanently. Even if you have a power cut, you don't need to worry because the data in ROM will not be lost. Now, the ROM data can be read only by the CPU. Now, we also have different types of ROM. Let us learn them. The first type of ROM is Programmable Read-Only Memory, also read as PROM. Now, in PROM, the data is programmed and written and it cannot be changed. That means, whatever data is written in Programmable Read-Only Memory, that is PROM, cannot be changed. The next type of ROM is Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now, in this type of ROM, the data can be erased by using ultraviolet rays. The next type of ROM is Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, also known as EEPROM. Now, data can be erased using electrical signals. Now that we have learnt about primary memory, let us learn about secondary memory. The secondary memory is known as the auxiliary memory. Now this memory is slower than the primary memory. Why is it slower? It is slower because the CPU does not access secondary memory directly. The contents of secondary memory need to be first moved to the main memory for the CPU to access it. This makes it a little slower as compared to the internal memory. Now, in secondary memory, the data is stored permanently. Now, let us try to understand this. Secondary memory storage devices are of two types internal storage devices and external storage devices. We will first start with internal storage devices. So, the hard disk is present inside the CPU and the hard disk is basically your internal storage device of the secondary memory. The hard disk is present inside the CPU. It stores large amount of data and software. Nowadays, we also have external hard disk. So, your hard disk is basically present in the CPU. All the software and all the large data is stored in that hard disk. Now, let us learn about external storage devices. The external storage devices are used externally in the computer system. The first external storage device that we will study is CD. CD stands for compact disk. I'm sure you all have seen CD in your house. So CD is a circular disk and the capacity is less than the hard disk. That means your CD also stores information. However, the storage capacity of the CD is very less compared to your hard disk. The next device is DVD. Now DVD stands for Digital Versatile Disk. Now DVD also looks like a CD. The shape is circular. However, the DVD stores more information than the CD. That means it has a capacity more than that of CD. It can store 12 times more data than CD. The next is a pen drive. Well, a pen drive is used to transfer data from one computer to another. It is small in size and it is light weighted. So it can be easily used to transfer data from one computer to another. Pen drives are easy to carry as well. <laughs> 